Welcome. Hello, everyone. And in this webinar, we're going to talk about battery testing methods, procedures, and of course, standards. We're hoping to make this webinar interesting and worthwhile. And first of all, we need to talk why do we need vibration testing during the battery development and so on. As you know, lithium ion batteries are gaining popularity now and uh, they are commonly used for electric vehicles and during their lifespan, these batteries can um, undergo a variety of vibrations, temperature changes, shocks uh, and so on. Also, um, you may know that battery design is really complicated and during this development process, we need to take um, all safety risks, risks and no non-stationary vibrations into account. So, uh, here in the slide, you can see uh, all spheres of battery testing. Uh, battery testing includes durability tests, uh, for example, using vibration tests like random and fatigue damage spectrum, abuse damage and crush tests, altitude simulations, thermal tests. Um, it can be external short circuit tests, vibration tests, and of course, drop tests. Um, and vibration tests can be usually combined with thermal and climatic testing. Uh, doing all these tests, we can check our battery on the test for its parameters and its safety requirements. Uh, in this webinar, we are going to talk mainly about vibration testing and an ability to combine it with climatic and thermal tests. Now let's talk a little bit more about the equipment. Uh, for battery testing, I recommend to use our ruler ROC21 controller. Uh, it has four inputs to outputs and LCD screen, and it's scalable up to 32 input channels and eight output channels. It's a regular uh, ruler controller. It's the most common one, but it will cover all your needs. Uh, but if you want to scale up your system, you can use ruler ROC21 control, uh, 21M controller. It has two options with eight and four input channels. It has two outputs, uh, also an LCD screen. It is also scalable, but it can be scaled up to uh, 64 channels. And using this controller, we have an ability to connect um, temperature sensors like uh, PT-1000 sensor and uh, type K thermocouple. Uh, using uh, our uh, test stop, we can work with such uh, equipment like climatic chambers. You can see them, them on the left side. We support Modbus TCP protocol, and now we can work with such climatic chambers like Xir, um, Horad, uh, Shanghai Electric, and ATAC. But if you want uh, some other climatic chamber and you have a specification for it, uh, you can write us an email and we will implement it into the software. It's um, it's not a problem, so if you need this feature, we have it. Also, we have an ability to control uh, power amplifiers using Modbus TCP protocol. Uh, and here on the right side, you can see uh, our sensors, which can be connected to our ROC21M controller. It has uh, two connectors on its back side and using uh, the sensors, you can uh, create a temperature and humidity graphs um, during the test and get the data and analyze it. Uh, also, uh, during um, our battery testing, we need to take care of our safety tools. On the left side, you can see a sand hopper. It can be used while we 
trying to damage our batteries and used to stop the fire by dropping the sand. Uh, and on the right side, you can see um, protection chambers. Um, they can protect uh, an engineer or um, a tester from an explosion of the battery. And sometimes uh, such situations appear, so you need to be prepared for this while testing your batteries. Um, now, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the test types. Uh, we have four main uh, tests during the battery testing. Uh, we usually run sign, random, shock, and transient capture options. Uh, but in some cases, like some inner company standards, uh, we can use some sign and random on random tests, which will help us to combine sign and random. We can use advanced sign for speeding up the test. It is widely used in automotive. For example, um, some uh, car manufacturers use uh, multi-sign multi sweep speed up the test. Uh, so let me check the questions. Uh, here we see it. Uh, yes, yeah, so the first question, our battery testing for vehicle level will be explained in the webinar as well. Uh, in this webinar, I'll try to cover all um, abilities for battery testing uh, for, for example like uh, automotive and we will have a user case um, it will be in the end so all these test types features can be applied uh, to the whole sphere of battery testing and if you wish you can use it in automotive uh, let's talk uh, let's continue with the test types. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have an ability to use advanced sign option to speed up the tests. We can use fatigue test for resonance search and analysis. We can extend shock with uh, shock response spectrum and TTH shock tests, which will help us to create an advanced shock waveforms. And if we need to, we can use a um, fatigue damage replication test for real life events replication. Also, I need to mention that in some cases and in some standards, we need to use multi shaker tests. We will talk about it today. And um, some standards need to uh, influence our object in a multi axis way. So now about the standards, here we have the most common standards in battery testing like SAE G2464, it's for electric and hybrid electric vehicle rechargeable energy storage systems. Today we are going to talk a little bit more about SAE G2380, it's single battery durability tests and uh, I'll show you in the profile examples. Also, we have here an uh, UL2054 test and certification for battery packs. Um, we have another standard from this type. And of course, we have MIL STD 810H. It's a MIL free standard for environmental testing. And uh, for example, you may know such standard like GMV um, 16390, it's um, an inner General Motors battery testing standard. Um, today I'll show you some pre-created pre tests which can be created in our test up software from the template. And um, if you wish, we will expand this um, pre created templates and further versions. Um, you can send us your profiles and we will create templates and add it in our software. Now, 
we're going to talk about our first profile. It's a signed profile from SAE J2380. It's regular sign. Here you see the profile. We're going to run from 10 hertz up to 1000 uh, hertz at 1G uh, level. Uh, and here we have our tolerance lines at 6 decibels level. And to create this test in our software, you need to go here. Uh, you have a test up icon here, so you press it. And here you have a create test. Uh, after that, you go to based on the template. Here you have all available now standards, for example, ASTM, earthquake tests, IST for um package testing our well-known meal std and here we have sae i find sign option and press here and here you see our profile is created automatically from the template we are running from 10 hertz up to 1000 hertz at 1g level and we moved our tolerance level up to six decibels. In this way, you can create uh, this test. And it's the first uh, vibration test from the standard. And now let's press OK. And you see that if you use a template, it can take some, for example, one or two minutes to create a test. Now let's go back. Our to our presentation and uh, the second interesting and widely used profile from the standard is uh, a random uh, it consists of three profiles the first one uh, covers for x and y axis it's widely used in multi-shaker tests here you see the profile and for the z axis we have another profile both of the profiles run from 10 hertz up to 1000 hertz uh, it's the most basic vibration range uh, and to create this in our software also press this button go to templates and find our random here you see we have a profile for x and y axis and the profile for Z axis. Let's open this one. Here you see the profile. Uh, in our software, we have an option to create random profile into ways, like here in points. You can find this standard, uh, this profile in the standard. It's shown in this way. Here in the bottom, you can recalculate the desired acceleration value for example here we have 1.7 if we want to increase the level we enter 2g and press recalculation here you see the profile is recalculated and let me show you another option about the profile lines uh, if you want to change the view you go to configuration default settings and here you have an option enter random profile by points you disable it press ok uh, and here we go to test settings and here you see you can enter this profile uh, with a table view in some cases it's uh, easier and um, i prefer this way but if you want to and your profile like shown in standard uh, use um, the proper way uh, do we have some questions about random yes, we have some questions so the first one is if there is an object which i need to impact for a continuous period of time which option can i use to make a test faster uh, so the participant of our webinar says that uh, he heard about fds and he asks to tell a little bit more about it. Uh, yeah, I uh, described this feature many times. We have 
a video in our YouTube channel about fatigue damage spectrum option. Uh, this feature allows you uh, to recalculate um, your, uh, for example, signal recording or some kind of data uh, into another profile. Uh, I'll show you a quick example here in the random you press FDS calculator. Here you can uh, enter uh, your file. For example, we can have a date recording. We enter it here. And for example, um, this date recording durates for uh, one hour. And uh, to test our object for durability, we need to run this test for example for five days but we don't have such time and we want to test our object uh, faster so we enter uh, our desired durability and for example in that case we can convert uh, five days test to for example five hours duration test um, these calculations are based on palgram minor rule and um, we have some additional options here. They are based on Palgram Miner. And if you want some more information about this feature, watch our video. It's, it has a detailed explanation about this feature. And it's widely used during durability tests and checks. And um, maybe one day we will make some uh, user uh, cases about this feature. It is used in aerospace and automotive. So uh, this feature is really interesting. It can save you time. And um, I recommend you to use this feature for um, minimization of test run time. And there is one more question also. Can we answer it at the moment? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, do you have something like kurtosis, control or kurtosis settings in your software? Uh, I think yes. In random, we need to go to control tab. And here we have a kurtosis option. We enable it press the settings and here uh, we can set uh, the kurtosis coefficient and its gain and um, these values will be applied during the test run and um, you can use it during the random test. Also, um, now let's create another test or standards. Let's disable kurtosis. And our final test will be Milis TD shock. We have three of them. Let's create a regular half sign. Here you see the profile. And about the uh, shock features we have here, uh, the most interesting now is the filter. You can apply it here, enter the frequencies. And if you have a control channel, this frequency range will be used during the test run and it will be fit filtered from the signal. And uh, on measuring channels, um, it will, this filter will be used only for data visualization. And I can see another question uh, about the SRS graph. Uh, okay, yeah, I can see it. Uh, can you display or calculate SRS graph in regular shock test? Uh, in this version, we have special tabs for this uh, it was implemented because our our users requested it and here after you fill pulse and schedule for shock tests you can enter your SRS table here 
and you need to enable use as rest table here and after that you need to enter analysis parameters and enable make as rest calculations uh, in that case you'll be able to create SRS versus frequency graph during the test run and uh, I need to tell you a little, a little bit more about another interesting feature it is widely used during uh, the drop tests it is called uh, transient capture um, usually we recommend it to combine uh, it with the shock test so you have two systems one of them is making shocks or you can have a drop machine and another one is used for transient capture analysis in that case you connect your uh, measuring sensors to the system you won't generate any signal and after the drop uh, you'll collect uh, the data and you'll be able to analyze it so uh, I recommend you to combine these features with shock tests and you'll get the best results. And now after we describe some main profiles, we can go to um, another interesting topic. I want to tell you a little bit more about uh, user experience. Uh, company named Goshen is an American company with branches in Japan, Singapore, and China. Uh, they uh, try to create and they uh, make next generation of uh, battery packs. They are environmentally friendly and they are widely used for uh, electric vehicles and storing energy. So they need to perform vibration testing during the development. So, uh, and of course, they need to test the reliability of these battery packs. Um, and um, here you see uh, the requirements for the system. Uh, the first option uh, was to allow the user quickly set up the test, switch between the tests and test types. So uh, I showed you that our software can create templates, go between the tests really quickly. Also, uh, they uh, wanted to have a built-in charge, uh, charge amplifier for the charge sensors. Uh, as you know, all our controllers has a built-in charge amplifier and uh, a final point was uh, to make a system which will, won't be rather complex. Uh, so, we, uh, we made, uh, we comp compared all the requirements and they bought a vibration system. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about the customer profiles. And the first pro profile is a regular sine sweep with the resonance surge. It's our basic 10 hertz up to 1000 hertz sweep. Uh, and it was a feature which is called resonance surge. You, know, you need to enable it in the software. And after that, uh, after the test run, you'll see a table with all the find reson found resonances. After that, uh, they asked for a cyclic sweep frequency uh, for a long time durability test. Uh, we have uh, a large variety of options in science schedule, so you can create all kinds of sweeps. So you can create step sweeps and hold frequencies. So uh, our uh, sweep uh, sign module uh, covered all this uh, feature request and finally uh, they sent us a random test profile for long time durability here you see the profile uh, uh, they run it at uh, 5 hertz up to 200 hertz and in that case uh, you can perform a durability analysis so I think uh, 
that's all about the tests and another interesting feature that uh, they uh, used our uh, demo mode um, which helped us to um, calculate the profiles on site make some uh, pre-calculations like mass values maximum acceleration velocity and displacement and um, also, we uh, covered the uh, shake that base requirements, and it's really easy to use. And now I think we have some more questions. Yes. So uh, the first is how many control channels can we have at the same time? Uh, it is based on the controller for RLC21 and RLC21M, you can have as many control channels as you have on your devices. For example, the maximum control channels for uh, eight RLC21s will be 32, and for RLC21M, it will be 64. And, um, I'm sorry, there is one more question regarding control channels. So, uh, can we set notching limits on control channels? Uh, yeah, we can set uh, notching on control channels. And uh, I want to say some more words about the previous question about the number of control channels. And if we have a rule C25, uh, we, we can have uh, as many control channels as we have on our controller and I need to mention uh, it must be only a master controller if we have um, a system which combines um, um, some number of these controllers. Uh, it is based on the synchronization type between the controllers and uh, I think um, um, we have do we have more questions now no uh, and some words about multi-channel control uh, as i know uh, in some cases in random uh, we have large testing object like a battery pack uh, and we place uh, sensors on different angles some set of sensors in the center and in that case uh, we can enable all these sensors as control and um, we will get uh, the higher precision during, during the test run so I think this option is rather important and can be used during the battery testing and I think um, that's all the basic information I um, wanted to tell you about uh, our abilities to um, test batteries and um, these all features can be used in automotive, some regular batteries development, battery development research and uh, I can say that RULA provides all necessary equipment for your battery vibration tests. We can connect temperature sensors, all, um, all kind of measuring sensors like accelerometers, displacement sensors, strain gauge sensors, um, pads, and um, also we have an ability to work with uh, climatic chambers and um, power amplifiers via Modbus TCP and it's it's widely used in automotive uh, development in e-cars so also we discussed uh, the safety requirements like sand hoppers uh, some safety chambers uh, and of course I tell you about um, the test types which can be used the most basic ones some more interesting like sign random on random which combines uh, random test and the sign vibration and of course we talked about 
the standards um, in um, battery testing. And if you wish, you, we can add more templates uh, for these um, tests in our software. So you, you won't create them um, manually. You um, download the software, install it, press uh, the desired test profile, and uh, the system will be ready to run the test. It will save you time. So if you have any other questions, we have some time. Yeah, and well, I can say that today's webinar was really interactive. Uh, thank you for your questions very much. And we are waiting now for more, if you have, of course. So if you uh, don't have questions now, you can send us an email with questions about battery testing, some requirements uh, or your specifications, and our team will help you uh, to find um, the, the system or the configuration which will uh, fit your requirements. So write us if you need some help. And I think that's all for today. Okay, yes, uh, thank you for your attention, for taking your time uh, for being with us today. And we are hope to see you next time. Bye. Goodbye, have a nice day.